Amen. Well, let's get on with the word of God. Amen. This evening. Amen. Tonight. Amen. It's Wednesday. And we're so blessed. Amen. To be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. And with that, amen, uh, also we've always shared, amen, that uh, Wednesdays, amen, Wednesdays, we do uh, also add, amen, uh, this service time. Because normally it's in the cafe, normally it's a, a, a Bible study, tabletop study, amen, as we get together in the Word. And so we add it to our uh, Spotify podcast, Activating. And so if you're listening to that, amen, this will be podcast number 22. And that will be added to the Spotify podcast, as well as it being posted to YouTube. And that's only on our Wednesdays. Our Sunday mornings, we do not add that to the podcast because there's a lot more other things going on. With that being said, as we were sharing earlier, uh, we were talking about that spirit of obedience and response that kind of carried over from Sunday. And so when we see this, amen, we're going to look at Matthew, amen, uh, in the second chapter. We're going to just kind of look at a synopsis, amen, of what the, you know, what happens after the birth of Jesus, right? We're after Christmas now. And for many, I'm already counting down till next year. I've seen some posts on social media and, you know, it's declared, you know, like already 363 days, 364 days until next year. Now, for many of us, amen, we always declare, amen, that, you know, Christmas is every day, right? Because we're here and, and Jesus is on the throne and, and the salvation as that gift, amen, thousands of years ago was given to us on that night that he was born. Today, we still have that. And that's still the gift for you and I. And we're going to look at that because that's the most important thing that happens after Christmas. Because we're going to look at the cousin of Jesus, amen, and a few points uh, with that, amen. So we're going to jump in, amen. And, and, and I want you to understand this. It is important that we are obedient and responsive to God, whether he comes to us in a dream, whether he comes to us in a prophetic vision, or whether there's an angelic visitation. We see this throughout all the word of God, throughout this portion of scripture that are around, surrounding around the birth of Jesus Christ. Not only the announcement, but also the, the commission, uh, not only of Joseph and Mary, but of Zacharias and Elizabeth. And we see the visitation, the angelic visitation, and so we are confident that those visitations are coming. You know, it's funny how the world, you know, we, we kind of forget about Scripture. Or we deny these truths in the Scripture. But God still wants to speak to us today. Amen. And so, as, as I was sharing earlier, the importance of a prayer life. Many times if we're lacking in our prayer lives, I know that if I'm lacking in my prayer life due to, you know, sickness or through, you know, due, you know through chaos or, or circumstances that are going on, and I'm lacking in my early morning prayer or my midnight prayer time, uh, then when something's been placed upon me, I feel the urgency that I still need to know what God wants in that, that request of my life. Amen. It could be from family. It could be from strangers. It could be from the church. It could be from other brothers and so forth and so on. But when my prayer life is on point, amen, and I'm, I'm, I'm in prayer, uh, I'm, nothing's robbing me. You know, I'm not sick. Uh, it, you know, so forth and so on. I'm not overbooked or tired or traveling or whatever. Then I'm in deep prayer in my morning time and my midnight time. And so what's happening is that I'm a kind of already addressed, amen, in the Holy Spirit to what God is going to be up to. In other words, he's, he's dropping hints. And so when these requests, many times God gives me a warning or a, per, a preparation. And then when the request comes, I'm like, okay, that's what God was talking about in my prayer life. Now, you may not agree with that. Maybe you do. But since this is a podcast, as well as a Wednesday night service, uh, I would challenge you to, to get into a discussion. Listen to the podcast, podcast number 22. And then uh, maybe it'll strike, amen, this discussional piece, amen, where you and I can talk about when our prayer life is suffering or lacking, when, when God is calling upon us, then we have to go back and then begin initiating prayer. I can share testimony after testimony. I would love to share that in a discussion time, amen, and when I am, when I'm on point with my prayer, God begins to show me things that are prophetically going to take place. Some of them are warnings, not bad warnings, but just warnings, or maybe should I say a heads up, amen? So we're going to look at this, amen, because I want to give you three points tonight that we look at through this portion of study. In, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 13, the Bible says, Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother. And flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word, 
For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose in verse 14, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. And they were there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Then in verse 16, Herod, amen, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all male children who were in Bethlehem and in all of its districts from two years old and under according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. And then verse 17 says, it was fulfilled that when spoken by the Jeremiah the prophet, saying a voice was heard in Ramah, amen, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, because there are no more. Now in verse 13, then Herod was dead. Behold, an angel of the Lord uh, appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise. Take the young child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose and took the young child and his mother, and he came into the land of Israel. And verse 22 says, but when he heard that uh, Archelaus, amen, was reigning over Judea instead of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. And he came and dwelt into a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. In verse three, uh, chapter three, verse one, the Bible says, Then in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For verse 3 says, For it is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now I'm going to stop right there, amen, because we read uh, quite a, a bit of scripture, amen. And I want to look at this, amen, because uh, there's an understanding that you and I, amen, when we come together in the presence of God, amen, God will begin to speak. And I want you to understand this. If there's one key that you can find in here, and then is the fact that every obedient and every response that particularly here, not only was its reference in chapter three of that of John the Baptist, but but here with Joseph, it begins to fulfill prophetic voices or the prophetic voice of God, the things that God has spoken to through its, his prophets. What does that mean for you and I today? I mean, what it means is that you and I. When we are obedient to God and when we are responsive to God, there are prophecies, amen, that may have been spoken over your life. Maybe you've heard those prophecies or maybe uh, there are prophecies that are yet to be spoken over your life. In either way, when you and I are obedient to God and responsive to God, it, that we begin to fulfill those prophecies. In other words, it takes your obedience and my response, my obedience and your response to fulfill what God is speaking to be done in your life and in your family's life. And we see that through Joseph. Everything that he responded to and everything that he was obedient to began to fulfill the fact that he would call his son out of Egypt and that his son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, would be called a Nazarene. Now imagine, I mean, there, yes, there's time lapse in this because of the age of John the Baptist, the evidence of their return back to uh, Nazareth, amen. But the fact of the matter is, amen, that you and I, amen, must be ready. And that's why when we opened up in our, our discussion this uh, evening, amen, we were talking about, amen, the fact of our prayer life, amen, always adding on to time of delay when we're lacking in our prayer life, then it lacks in our obedience and lacks in our response time because we now have to go to the drawing board, so to speak, and then we begin to take these things before the Lord. And to find out if this is what he wants. When we're on point in our prayer life, then when God speaks or visits us or shows us a vision or a dream, then it begins to become active because we're already in prayer. Amen. And that's a good discussional piece that we would like to discuss in a later time. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. We know that this massacre takes place. We know that, you know, Jesus, uh, the son of, of God, amen. Uh, through the father and Mary and, and, and uh, through the father of Joseph and Mary, 
They're now departing out of Bethlehem. And they're being warned and directed, amen, to go into Egypt because he's still being sought. And we see this massacre that was also prophetic massacre. We knew that this was going to happen. Amen. We knew. And just like we know in the end days or in the end times, amen, that, that we know that there's certain things that are, are going to happen. Amen. We know that there's going to be false teachers and, and many of God's elect are going to fall away from the truth. Amen. We're going to be a people of itching ears and wanting to hear what we want to hear. Amen. Or wanting to be spoken to what we desire to be spoken to, to, to satisfy the itch in our ear. Amen. Not necessarily the motivation of the, 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 the tugging or transformation of our soul and our heart. Can I get an amen? And so with that, we want to focus on this term, repent. After this massacre and after this exodus and return of Joseph and Mary back into the region of Judea, amen, we see that John the Baptist is activated, amen, in his ministry. And in that, amen, we find him, amen, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want to look at that word repent. One thing that's most important after Christmas and after the celebration of that is that we are to look at our lives, amen. What better way to end the year every year, especially 2021, where we are at in our repentance? Now, uh, I'm sorry, but, you know, uh, there's a lot of different teachings and foundations that, you know, once saved, always saved, meaning that once we get saved, that's it. We're done. Uh, uh, we're saved. And then whatever mistakes we do, they're covered under that salvation. But we know that too many times in the scripture, like that of John uh, 21, amen, with Peter jumping uh, in back into the boat, going back to his former ways, amen, of tradesmen, amen, rather than being called as a fisher of men. And we know that he took off that outer garment. If you study the Jewish customs of that time, amen, they symbolized, amen, uh, position or, 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 or status, amen. But when he jumped back into the water to meet Jesus, on the sea bank or on the shore, amen, he puts that coat back on and so forth, amen, and being restored by the Lord. We know that the Lord restores because he restored Peter three times of his three denials, amen? And so that's for another later, but I'm just trying to give you some, some key points to go back and, and study that, amen? When we come to an end of the year, it's a good time to take an account. It's a time for us to wrap up our books, amen, uh, uh, our accounting, amen? Uh, businesses will begin to close out their year and to see where uh, they are in either the black or the red or whether they just broke even. And so when we think about that, what a great time, time of year to evaluate. And, and so one of the things that comes after the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior is born. Emmanuel, God is with you. Amen. God is with us. And so in that, amen, the next step, amen, is to take that salvation and that gift and receive it. And in that reception, we are called to repent or, and rather, repentance. And so when we think about this word repent, uh, metheneo, amen, that comes out of Strong's 3340. It comes from the, and we're going to break this up, amen, meta, meaning after, and noeo, amen, to think. Think after, amen, meta, meta, uh, neo. Amen. Meta uh, Neo in 3340 of Strong's. Amen. The first part of that word, meta, means after. And the latter part of that word, uh, no eo, amen, means to think. So repentance is a decision that results in a change of mind, which in turn leads to a change of purpose and a change of action. A change of mind leading, amen. To a change of purpose in action. And so, you know, annually, amen, you know, we're getting ready to, to in, 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 in just, you know, two more days, amen, uh, will be Friday, it'll be New Year's Eve, and then Saturday will be New Year's Day, amen, and it'll be a new year, 2022. And so many times we'll break out to make resolutions, and I challenge you, amen, to break out and make uh, New Year commitments, to be committed to something, amen. Uh, whether it's your goals and your dreams and your visions, amen, your plan for your family, your plan for your, your education, your professional, but do not forget to leave out God. Do not leave out God. Do not leave out your activity as a Christian or even maybe committing in a new year commitment to grow from a Christian into a disciple. What does I mean by that? Amen. To be, and I'm going to break that down, but 
to be a follower of Jesus to another level. And so when you think about that, amen, what comes after the birth of Jesus? Repentance. Because now we're going to be getting into that time uh, as we will be on, amen, into uh, March and, and April time for Easter. Amen. Will be the death, the crucifixion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It brings that salvation onto you and I. But here, John the Baptist is already walking around saying, repent, meaning change your mind, the way you think about things. And then it will lead into a change of purpose and action in our lives. Repentance, amen, is the message of the kingdom. The message of the season and the reason for the season is the birth of Jesus Christ. But the kingdom message now, amen, is repentance. Because he gives us, amen, a savior, his son Jesus, to be born, that he will save the world from its sins. And in that, we can only have that forgiveness when we repent and when there's repentance in our actions. See, there's a change in purpose, amen? So after Christmas, let's change our purpose. Our purpose now is to repent. Repent from our wicked ways. Repent from our sinful ways. And therefore, our action is repentance. In other words, we live out in that repentant life. Amen. And so, first of all, the call of the kingdom is to repentance. And the implications of biblical repentance are threefold. I want to give you this. Amen. Are threefold. One, renunciation and reversal. Number one, renunciation and reversal. So when we think about the implications of the biblical repentance, not just the way we think about repentance should be or ought to be or could be, but when we look into the word of God, amen, there is implications of the biblical repentance, and these are the and it's threefold, amen. And these are the three renunciation and reversal. We are renouncing, amen, the way that we lived our life outside of Christ. And there's a reversal of the way that we normally live. And so these are many times a challenge, amen, that when we were not saved, we lived a certain way. Now, I don't know about you, but when I walked away from the Lord, amen, uh, uh, for a couple of years there, and, and then also walked away from the Lord, amen, in, from a disciple, and those are the reasons why I say that I walked away from the Lord, because, see, I went from being a, a believer, a, a Christian, and then eventually one day in my life, a disciple. In other words, I was learning and, and I was uh, activated, amen, in the church, amen, as part of the ministry. But when you turn away from those things, amen, and you diminish those, in other words, there are forms of maybe stepping down, amen. And it wasn't that I lost my salvation at that moment. It wasn't that God was angry at me at that moment. But that led to something. In other words, if you stop telling your wife you love her, then eventually you're going to fall out of love with her and you're going to fall in love with something else. Amen. If you stop uh, encouraging your children, then eventually they're going to lose that encouragement and think that their failures, amen, are what you are what drives you. I mean, we're always angry at their mistakes rather than rem being reminded that we're to help them through those mistakes to learn the lessons that God has for us and so forth and so on. So eventually, amen, I stepped down, amen, walked away, amen, from those active places in my life and eventually i stopped the, the the renewed or the change of mind therefore it affected amen amen the renewed amen purpose that i had and then eventually it began to affect my actions and so uh, when you think about that amen renunciation and reversal are very important if you are today living the same way you normally have lived outside of the salvation of Christ Jesus, then there is something to look at. And especially right now at the end of the year, before you get into the new year in a couple of days, what a better way to sit down and repent before God and say, Lord, I want action. I want repentance. I repent. It's my purpose. Amen. That salvation comes from the gift of Jesus Christ and through the birth of Jesus Christ. And with that, amen, now today, amen, I am saved. Now I want to live in that life of repentance. Number two, submission and teachability. Number two, submission and teachability. See, when we come to this place where now we have renunciation and reversal, we're no longer doing. We're reversing the, the, the actions of our lives. 
And many times today, it, 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 you know, sometimes we don't feel different. We'll say, you know, I got saved, but everything still, still feels the same. The question is, are we renouncing? Amen. Are we renouncing our commitments and our loyalties from which we committed and we uh, stood for? Amen. In the way of life before we got saved. And if so, amen, then there needs to be a question or a checking of our renunciation. The reversal, that is exactly what it means. What, what, what was damaging us, what was tearing us up, what was destroying us, God reverses that. In other words, that's why when we were broken, uh, busted, disgusted, tore up from the floor up, and all these terminologies and phraseologies, amen, now there's a reversal, amen. Many people have been sick in the body, and God saved them from uh, tuberculosis, uh, uh, cirrhosis of the liver, and so forth and so on. They, you know, people were on, on death row, dying of cancer. God reverses that, amen, because of the ways that we were living, amen. Whether it was a criminal life, uh, uh, just a sinful, plain or sinful life, so forth and so on. He reverses that. He rekindles and mends, amen, and heals the relationship with our children, the relationships with our spouses, and the relationships with our family. But then after that becomes a form in the threefold, amen, number two, is that there is a form of a submission in our lives, and therefore also a teachability. Now, that's a key word, teachability. And many people, you know, times people say, well, I'm not being taught in the church. Well, their teachability is not just always receiving. Teachability is also a purpose. I come to church to be taught, or I read my Bible to be taught. I mean, I pray because I'm teachable. I, I read because I'm teachable. I come to church and I listen to the sermons and I follow with the sermons and I study from the sermons, amen, because I am teachable. But the reality, when, we, when there's a spirit of submission, submission is the purpose. So when we think about this threefold, we're taking those twofold. Amen, there's a change of mind. And then the biblical, amen, uh, uh, foundation is that, you know, there's this place where you and I, when we repent, re you know, changes our mind, which in turn leads to a change of purpose and action. So when we come to the repentance, which is a action, the purpose of repent, the action is repentance. Amen. That's the action of repent. And so in that threefold, we're looking at this. Why is there two? Renunciation is the purpose. The action is reversal. I renounce my former ways outside of salvation in my sinfulness. And the action is now everything's being reversed. There's a reversal, spiritual reversal. Sometimes it's mental, physical, amen, but also spiritual. Same thing in number two, submission. That's the purpose. The purpose is for us to submit to God, to submit to one another. Husbands and wives submit to one another, amen. Husbands submit to God. Wives submit to husbands, and together you'll have a beautiful marriage and household. Children submit, amen, to your parents, amen. And for us as Christians, we submit to God. And when we submit to God, we're therefore submitting to our spiritual leaders, which is the church. And we come together, amen, and we submit to one another. But the action of that submission is a teachability. And in that teachability, it doesn't stop there. When teachability is the purpose, then what is the action? Well, the fact of the matter is that you're being taught, and there's a teachability, so we're learning. And the action of teachability is what? I, I just said it about submission. When we submit to God as Christians, then we are then moved into a, a place of discipleship, and we then submit, amen, into our spiritual leaders. We submit to one another. We submit to our wives, our, you know, our husbands, our children will then submit to us, and so forth and so on. So there's a purpose and also a action in those purposes. Teachability is a purpose that we're able to be taught by the Holy Spirit and God through the teachers that God places in our lives. That our children are teachable through the parents' wisdom. And one another, amen, that husbands are teachable by God, and then a husband is teachable, amen, so that there's a teachability in the leadership of his marriage and family. So when we look at teachability as a purpose, then there is a action of that teachability, which means we grow, we learn. And when you and I are being taught by God in the scriptures, we know that there's another 
level or there's another threshold and there's another place. We once become believers and then Christians. And then that means we practice that belief. But then we follow Jesus as disciples. And in discipleship, amen, we eventually will move into the fivefold ministry. And it doesn't mean that you have to be a prophet, a missionary, or an evangelist, but you can also be a pastoral uh, uh, and teacher, amen, in that level. Regardless of whatever level you think you're, you're in, for lack of better words, I hate using the word level, but in the office of those teachings, amen, means that one day or another, whether it's in the structure of the church or the an organization of the church, whether it's a Bible study teacher or a Bible study leader in the home on, on the weekends or on, on weeknights, or it's a, a Sunday school teacher in the classrooms with the students or even with the youth, so forth and so on. We are teaching somebody, and that may even be our wives and our children by us as husbands as how we are being taught by God. Same thing with wives. The Bible teaches, amen, if a wife has an unsaved husband, it is by her actions that he may be saved. And so it is also in the woman's uh, ability that in her own life, being a Proverbs 31 woman, amen, being able to be a teacher uh, in, onto her children and onto her family. No better way than a mom to teach, amen, her young women and her, her daughters and her family on what it is to be married, uh, the blessings of marriage, amen. And I know there's a lot of people that will be offended by that, but too bad, amen. We're sticking to scripture, not manism, amen, and the ways of man today that want to break that down. The Bible says that a man who finds a wife finds a good thing, and whatever you disagree with that, that's on you, but not the word of God. The word of God is truth, amen. It's a two-edged sword, and it's spirit, and it's truth, amen. So we, as parents, teach our children how to respect wives one day when they get married, and we teach our daughters how to uh, respect their husbands, how husbands, amen, can submit to their wives and the wisdom that God gets to them, and as wives submit to their husband, amen. And so we look at that, amen. So in teachability, there's an action because we're being learned. And when we learn, we grow. Come on, somebody. Number three, continual shape ability. Continual shape ability. See, when we come to this place, amen, of being submitted, and teachable, then we're shapeable. What does that mean? You got to be careful, amen, that, we're, that as man, we're not shaping each other. The Bible goes into The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. We're to sharpen each other, not shape each other. Because, see, you can shape each other without an edge. And you can actually dull people or even hinder people. Come on, somebody. I'm just speaking the truth today, what the Lord gave me for this podcast and for this Wednesday service. We can shape each other, but it can also be a dull edge, amen? It could be rounded. It could be square. It could be jaggered, amen? And so what that means, it could be even a form of hurt, hindrance, oppression, and opposition. Come on, somebody. Uh, intimidation, so forth and so on. When preachers get up behind the pulpit and they start looking over the, the pulpit and they start, you know, trying to mad doll or they got that spiritual look. I used to hate it. When disciples in our church go, oh, pastors, give me that look. I used to hate that. My wife knew that. Amen. I would joke it and laugh it off and everything else. But they would say, you know, Pastor Ray Garcia, you give a look. When the men's win, the men's win. They go, oh, there goes that look. My daughter go, oh, there's that look. And, 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 and I didn't want that look. I didn't want that look because I don't want to be intimidated. I want to be in the authority of God. But many times pastors will get up to behind the pulpit and they'll make that look and you know, they'll have that face and, you know, all that. You know, and, and I'm telling you, you know what? Let it go. Let it go. We're shapeable, amen, by the Holy Spirit. We're shapeable in God. Amen, love. Amen, love. And, you know, love one another, amen, and that love will shape the encouragement and the spirit and the soul of a person, amen, because that love comes from God, amen. And so when we think about that, amen, we're not talking about being wishy-wash and and, 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 and being weak. No, we're talking about being meek. Strength is in meek, amen. In other words, understanding your ability and your power and your strength, amen, but being able to control that and submit that to the spirit of the living God. Can you say amen? And so I, I, many times I repent, and especially at the end of this year, I repent. I'm in an action of repentance right now, amen, as the 27th of the month is the end of my month and the 28th day is the beginning of my month, amen, I'm in the second day of the month. And so in that, amen, I'm already in the spirit of repentance. Why is that? I'm repenting from all those 
mistakes that I may, uh, may have made, amen, throughout this year. You know, if I gave that look, uh, or if I shaped someone by a fence, come on, somebody, or I shaped someone, amen, by, by opposing them and restricting them. That's why many times, amen, in our church, amen, uh, you, you look and you go, wow, I, I can do that. Yes, let the Holy Spirit shape you. Because, see, conviction of the Holy Spirit is greater than the conviction of my words. Come on, somebody. The conviction of the Holy Spirit is greater, amen, than the conviction of man's words. We know that we don't take lightly to words. Especially when you're married, amen, a husband being spoken to from his wife, amen, on things that need to be done and so forth. We don't listen. Come on, men. And so when we think about this, the, the threefold of biblical repentance is number three, continual shapeability. See, there's no birth into the kingdom without hearing the call to salvation. There's no uh, birth into the kingdom without hearing the call to salvation. Renouncing one's sin and turning from that sin and reversal of that sin is being made whole towards Christ, the Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we think about that, amen, now we're saved in Jesus Christ. Because we're called, amen, into salvation. The call to salvation. As John the Baptist said, repent for the kingdom of God is at end. Renunciation comes in renouncing my sin. Man, God, I'm a sinner and I am gonna, not going to do that no more. When many times you've been sick or you've been in a place and you're renouncing, oh my God, get me out of this. Lord, please, man, I'll never do this again. Or God, save me from this and I'll never make that mistake again. Or I'll run to you more, God. See, there's a reversal of our action. Many times we forget that. We made promises to God, and we forget that, and we go away. But because see, God's so merciful, and God's so tender that he doesn't force that. He doesn't throw it in our face every single day. He knows the commitments that you and I make to him in those moments of renunciation. And God, amen, wants to reverse what the wages of sin, meaning death. Whatever our sin was causing us to die, and I can mean not only mentally, uh, uh, but physically but also spiritually and emotionally. In the physical place, maybe their sin was killing you, like literally killing you. And so when we think about that, amen, we want to come to the reversal of that. And then in that submission and teachability, we now grow, amen, into the kingdom. See, there's no growth. First, there was no birth into the kingdom without hearing the call of salvation and renouncing one sin and turning from that sin, reversal. Turn around and go the other way through Christ Jesus, our Savior. That's Acts 3:19. Now, coming to the word of God in James chapter 1, verse 21 through verse 25. And in that, amen, there's no growth in the kingdom without obedience. There goes that word again, obedience. There's no growth in the kingdom without obedience to Jesus' commands. And to Jesus' commandments and Jesus' statutes and Jesus' order, amen, in accordance to his word. So there's no growth into the kingdom without obedience to Jesus' commandments and a childlike responsiveness as a disciple of Jesus yielding to the teaches, teachings of God's word. That's James chapter 1, verses 21 through verses 25. So there's no growth in the kingdom of God without obedience to Jesus' commandments and that teachability is a childlike responsiveness, amen, as a disciple of Jesus Christ and yielding to the teachings of God's word. Yielding to the teachings, not mending it and molding it. There's many people that are on social media today with their own slogans and their own, you know, influence or, or, or statements and, and written, amen, inspirations uh, of notation and so forth. But if it is not, if it does not align with God, if it's not in alignment with the word of God, do not listen to it. I'm sorry to tell you this, but I read a lot. And there are sometimes, amen, I read a lot of posts. Now, uh, I'll be honest with you. They're not on my Facebook. They're on originally on my wife's Facebook. Because my wife, she, she would, uh, you know, uh, follow different, uh, uh, different uh, speakers and different women of God and different men of God and, and different things that she would follow through, amen. And so uh, in that, amen, there are people, amen, uh, that are, are, are friends of friends, amen. And, and they just pop up, amen, and they'll say things, especially on the terms of women and marriage and all these other things, uh, living, amen, a life of holiness rather, rather than a life of wholeness, amen, and, and everything else. 
And so there's a lot of denunciation uh, uh, of God's structures of his word, the word of truth. Instead of living holy, we rather live holy, like we're complete. But you can't be complete without holiness. Come on, somebody. Because we can live, amen, we can have everything we want, we can do whatever we want, and we can experience whatever we want. But if there's no holiness, the presence of God and the Holy Spirit, through the renunciation of our sins, amen, and the reversal of those sins, and a new way of mindset, and a new purpose, and a new action, amen, then we're not whole. We are whole in the physical, and in the realm of emotions, and mentally, but we're lacking spiritually. And so many times, amen, I read some of these posts that just pop up occasionally and periodically, and I listen, and I say, my God, and I pray for them, because they're trying to revise, amen, holiness with wholeness. And it goes on. Amen. Singleness, amen, as a gift from God, is a command to do God's glory, not rather singleness because they're mad at their ex-husband or they're mad at their ex-boyfriend or fiance or they're just mad haters. And uh, I'll do a podcast, amen, on that. And I share the testimony of my wife, amen, and when we met and how God mended some of those brokennesses in her life, amen, that made her holy into a emotional of repentance and repent, amen, of heart, and there was a reversal, a reversal, and in that reversal, amen, she became new, amen, and therefore, amen, I was blessed, amen, with a beautiful wife and a wonderful marriage with some awesome kids, amen, ministry, amen, that's still going today, can you say amen, and so the third thing, amen, is we, there is no lifelong increase of fruit, Remember, it's threefold, birth, growth, and now fruit. Amen. One, amen, renunciation, reversal, amen, submission and teachability and continual shapeability. Because repent, when we repent, we change our mind, and there's a change, therefore, of purpose and action. Number three, there's no lifelong increase of fruit as a citizen of the kingdom without a willingness to accept the Holy Spirit's correction and guidance. I'm going to read that again. Because out of Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse 30, we find this truth. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Amen. That there is no lifelong increase of fruit as a citizen of the kingdom of God without a willingness to accept the Holy Spirit's correction and the Holy Spirit's guidance. That's why I said earlier, the conviction of the Holy Spirit is far more greater than the conviction of man's words. The Holy Spirit's conviction is more pure and holy and divine and eternal than the very mere words out of my own mouth. And so that's why I try to be careful, amen, and obedient and guide it and correct it by my choice of words, amen, and so there's times I'll say, well, for back, back, lack of better words, because I, I don't want to choose another word. And if I chose that word, that's the best word that I could uh, come to mind at that moment. Amen. And waiting on the Holy Spirit to correct that and to give us a divine, fine line into a specific word. And tonight, amen, we see the birth without, amen, hearing the call of salvation and renouncing and turning from our sins to Christ Jesus. There's no growth, amen, without obedience. To all that God says, and a responsiveness, there's that word again, responsiveness, as disciples of Jesus Christ, yielding to the teachings of God's word. And in, in James chapter 1, verse 21 through verse 25. The first one at birth, without hearing the salvation, is Acts chapter 3, verse 19. And there is no lifelong increase of fruit as a citizen of the kingdom without a willingness to accept the Holy Spirit's correction and direction. And we find that in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. So tonight, amen. I want to encourage you as we are looking, amen, uh, over the next couple of days on New Year's Eve, we're going to be introducing that, amen, theme for our church this year being God's response team, amen, and defining the hope of the kingdom of God, amen. But tonight, amen, we must understand that it's very important, very important that we get these principles in our lives. So I close once again in this podcast and in this Wednesday night service so that you and I, amen, could see this and understand this. Amen? That's one. When we come to repentance, it's only because we came to repent. 
Repentance is the first, because in that, amen, it begins to change our mind. Meta, after, no else, no eso, amen, is to think. No eo, I'm sorry, no eso. Uh, so meta is after, and no eo is to think. Meta o neo, amen, meaning repent. For repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand in chapter 3, verse 2. This was the call of John the Baptist to you and I. In that repentance, amen, or as we come to repent, it changes the way we think. It results in a change of mind, which leads to a change of purpose and action. The implications of biblical repentance is threefold. One, renunciation, renunciation, and reversal. Number two, submission and teachability. And number three, continual, continual shapeability. And in those, amen, we do not get what gives us the gift or the gift of key of access into eternity. And that is, amen, there's no birth into the kingdom of God, amen, without, amen, repentance, without hearing the call of salvation. We must be listening for that call at every moment of our lives. That's why it's a continual place. It's not once and for all. It's continual. Come on, somebody. It's not once I say it and then I never say it again. There are always consistent, consistently times and places in my own personal life where I'm being called to salvation, where the Holy Spirit tells me, you better get saved in that, brother. You better change that thought, right? You better change that. Ain't. Come on, somebody. And so I'm listening to the call of salvation. There's no birth into the kingdom of God. This is a kingdom principle, unless I hear the call to the salvation. And that I re renounce and refuse and reject the sins of my life. Amen. And then refer, re reverse my way of direction. And then for turning from my sin towards Jesus Christ. There is no growth in the kingdom of God. Amen. The first one was Acts chapter 3, verse 19. The second, uh, James chapter uh, 1, verse 21 through verse 25. There's no growth in the kingdom unless we are obedient to Jesus' commandment and with a childlike responsiveness to the word of God. That's James chapter 1, verse 21 through verse 25. And last but not least, there is no, no fruit, no increased fruit as a citizen of the kingdom of God without a willingness to accept the Holy Spirit's direction and the Holy Spirit's correction. And that's found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. I pray, man, that you take this study and you take this podcast and you listen through it and ask yourself all three of those three sections. Repent, and then under repentance, the threefold, and therefore the kingdom principle under the threefold Thereof. I share this and I give you those scriptures. Amen. If you didn't get those scriptures, text me and I will give them to you. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, tonight we come before you and we thank you. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, God, we pray that you will have your way. Amen. In each and every one of our lives. We come before your presence and we thank you. Amen. That you will have your way, Lord, into what you're